Welcome to Data Science 1, Probability, Discrete Bivariate Distributions. In order to understand this video, you're going to need to go back and look at what a random variable is and a probability distribution. If you're familiar with those ideas, then let's move ahead. So now we want to change our focus a little bit. We're going to go backwards in time. We're going to go all the way back to sort of the sample space. So up to now, we've only considered measuring one attribute of our experiment outcome at a time. So like the fish, we could measure the height or we can the weight or the, the width uh, or the value. But we only did one at a time. What if we wanted to look at something that happens more than one at a time? And first, we're going to start with the discrete. So let's consider a friendly game of football where we measure two random variables. X is the number of shots taken, and Y is whether or not they win or not, with zero being lose and one being win. Okay, so here they're paired together, right? You can't have one without the other in this sense. So what we want to do is we want to look at things, things as a pair. And this would be the possible outcomes that we could see for our random variable. Okay, so it could be zero, zero. They take zero shots and they lose. Uh, here's this weird outcome. They take zero shots but win because maybe the other team forfeit. Okay, here they could take one shot and lose or one shot and win probably rare, but maybe uh, take two shots and lose or take two shots and win and so on all the way down. But they're together because you want to look at how they're related to each other. And that's what we'll get to as we're moving through this set of videos. Okay, so let's consider another example. Let X be the grade of someone that they, they learn earn in a course. Okay, so in, in the American system, you would get an A, B, C, D, or F. And let Y be their gender. So here the random variable X maps 1 to A, 2 to B, 3 to C, 4 to D, and 5 to F. The random variable Y maps 1 to F and 0 to M. And here we can create what's called a bivariate probability distribution. And this one will be in the form of a table. Okay, so we have a table here, and we have the variable for y, 0, 1, and then for x, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And in the entries here, we have what are the actual probabilities, okay? So there would be uh, 0 0.1660 probability for a male to get an A. And there is a 0 0.03 zero five probability of a male to get a f get an f okay so this is how you would read this table here notice that women are more likely to get an a more likely to get a b less likely to get a c d or f or more likely to get an f in this case so this is a nice little table format here that we could use and you'll see things come in this format so some properties of bivariate random variables. So x, y is going to be a function that goes from our sample space to R2. So this is the real line, or not the real line anymore. It's the real plane, x, y plane. Uh, it's called a joint probability distribution, and we're going to denote it with an f sub x, y to show which variables this thing is going to have. And you'll want this later because there's going to be lots of f's floating around, and you want to know, which one am I looking at? Uh, X, Y are the inputs, and uh, because we have two random variables, uh, this is going to require that this function is greater than or equal to zero for all X, Y in uh, the real plane. And for discrete random variables, when we add everything up, everything here up, it has to come out to one. Now, go back to our table that we had before, and you can see it meets those requirements. All the entries here are not are not negative right there's no zeros even so they're all positive numbers so we went on that one and then if you add them all up and here's if you were to write it all out to add it all up it sure enough equals one so we feel good there um, so this is a appropriate probability distribution for our two random variables Okay, now let's look at one that might be represented with a formula. Consider the following discrete bivariate random variable with the probability distribution equal to fxy is x plus y over k, where x could take on the value 0, 1, 2, or 3, and y can take on the value of 0, 1, or 2. Well, we need to know what this k is in order to make it a proper probability distribution. So what we would have to do is add up 
all of the possible values of the numerator, then and then we will get what the denominator needs to be in order for this thing to total up to one. All right, so what we would do is we'd lay it out in a table format. I mean, you don't have to, but this is the easiest way to do it for right now. Uh, zero plus zero is zero. Zero plus one is one. Zero plus two is two. Zero plus three is three. Two plus zero is zero, or I mean two. Two plus three or two plus one is three, two plus two is four, two plus three is five. And when you add all these numbers up inside this little box here, you're gonna end up with 30. Okay, now, now that we have it as a proper probability distribution, we can calculate different types of probabilities that you might not have thought about calculating before. So here we could actually calculate what's the probability X equals Y. So this would be the probability of our density here, our distribution, and we would put in here zero, zero, one, one, two, two. Those are the ones where they could be equal to each other, and notice the numbers are equal. So you'd plug in zero, zero over 30, one plus one over 30, two plus two over 30, you get zero. Uh, for this piece, you get two over 30 plus four over 30, which is six over 30, which is one fifth. So there's about a 20% chance or one-fifth probability that we see x equal to y. All right, quick summary here. It's going to be a function that's going to go from our sample space to the real plane. We call it a joint probability distribution because they come together to reflect that there are more than one random variable, in this case two. They all must be positive, and we add them all up. That has to come out to one. And the probability distribution may be in table or formula format. So we're going to look at the continuous version next, uh, and this is where calculus gets kicked back in. And this might be a little bit calculus intensive for you, so if you're not that happy with calculus, you can still watch it anyway, uh, because maybe it'll help you improve your calculus. Uh, and if not, the answers are there anyway, so you can just relax about it. All right, see you there.